28-year-old Marceline Butzer was the youngest of four girls and grew up in Bukavu, an area currently restricted by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office for all but essential travel, during one of the most violent periods in the DRC's history. After her father left the family when she was three, she was truly inspired by her mother's example and how she faced up to the challenges and difficulties of raising a young family on her own in the DRC, a country where a woman is generally considered less valuable than a man and unable to make an economic contribution to her community and society. Knowing it was up to her to map out her own future, Marceline went to university where she studied agronomy, a branch of agricultural science that deals with the study of crops and soils. She then formed Rebuild Women's Hope in 2013 as a platform to combat the misconceptions about women and help ensure other women could provide for their households, reach their potential and become economically active members of society. The organisation works to create a spirit of entrepreneurship and self-management in women in order to raise the standard of living in their communities and across their nation. This drive to deliver social change would have been a bold approach in many parts of the world, but particularly so in the country considered to be the most dangerous of all to be a woman. Based in Bukavu, on the shores of Lake Kivu, Marceline and Rebuild Women's Hope have already helped more than 1,000 women register as farmers and subsequently sell their coffee to Coffee Lack Sarl, the DRC's largest Arabica coffee export company, for international distribution through Falcon Coffees in the UK. In 2015, Rebuild Women's Hope constructed its first washing station on the island of Ijwi and successfully exported their first container of coffee in 2016. Thanks to a generous grant from Strauss Coffees, the organisation will build its second washing station on the island of Ijwi in early 2017. Rebuild Women's Hope was born out of Marceline's desire to improve the lives of women and give them dignity and a place and voice in society through uniting a group of coffee-producing women who are fighting against inequality in women's rights and re-establishing the value of a woman's work. Her efforts to show just what women can do would have struck a chord with Burns, who considered women as his equals, socially and intellectually, and will create a legacy for thousands of women and their families in this harsh part of the world. That's what makes her a worthy finalist for the Robert Burns Humanitarian Award 2017.